So what we have here is a dollar sprinkler that you can get at Lowe's. And we're going to be performing a functional analysis on it. And all that is, is where you look at how it works with all the parts still together. Eventually, we'll take it apart and see all the individual pieces and components to this. But when you take things apart, you may accidentally break it. And so it's important to figure out how the parts all go together and document how all the parts go together and how they work together before you take it apart. And so let's take a look at this thing. We've got some sort of cover, and at the bottom, you can see there's some threads where you'd insert some sort of hose nozzle um, to allow water to come into the sprinkler. Um, and at the top of this cover, we have this well, top part to our cover, and if you look, it will twist off, although we're not going to do that just yet. And if you take some item, like some pin, and stick the non-pointy end in, you can see that you can cause this tube to stick out. You don't want to stick a sharp part in because it might get stuck in there. Um, you have certain kinds of pencils they won't fit unless you only put the sharp part in. You don't want to do that. And you see if I try this other end with this clip, it doesn't actually go in. But something like this highlighter, again, if I pick the non-pointy end or the non-clip end, it works pretty well. You push it up, and you can see it come out. But if you look what happens if I let go, it actually pushes back on its own. So there's something in there that's causing it to force back down and that kind of projected off to the side there. So it's something with some strength. But now that we've kind of looked at the components to this, let's start working on this functional analysis. And so if you look, the first question is, who is the manufacturer? And if we take a look at this sticker on this sprinkler, you'll see that it's made by this company, Orbit irrigation products incorporated and so that's really easy to answer we just type in orbit irrigation products incorporated and what is the primary function of this object and hopefully you can answer that question on your own it's a sprinkler hopefully you know what a sprinkler does and the next question asks you to sketch the sprinkler yourself and then it says if you're submitting an online document take a picture of your sketch and paste it here. Or you could just submit the picture via Schoology on your own if you'd prefer. But, but real quick, let me show you how to take a picture that you took on your phone and paste it into a document like this one. And so if you look, I actually already sketched this out, took a picture of it and emailed it to myself. And so that's all I did. I took my email on my phone and I emailed the picture to myself. So now all I need to do is just save this image to my computer. And there's a few ways you can do this. You don't have to email it to yourself. You could also connect your phone directly to your computer through Bluetooth or through a cord and find your picture that way. But I'm gonna go ahead and save this emailed picture to my pictures on my computer and hit save. And then once I have it on there, what I can do is I can actually open up that file, find it in my computer under pictures or wherever I saved it. You could save it to your desktop, wherever you want. And then I can just drag the file right into the Word document. And if you look, there it is, and it's pretty big, so we can make it smaller. And now that I made it smaller, you can see it's back on the first page, and I can keep making it smaller from here. And mine rotated 90 degrees for some reason. Sometimes these things happen. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate it the correct direction. You can kind of see what I based the sketch on by comparing it to the actual image of the product. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to go to wrap text. And I'm going to put it behind my text so that it doesn't affect the document in any way. It's just behind the text. I can now move it around freely and I'm going to crop out the bottom of this picture. So how do you do that? I'm going to right click and go to crop and I'm just going to drag this up until that bottom part's not in there. And you can see now I have a sketch of my sprinkler in my document. Now, as you can see, this is not a perfect sketch, and yours doesn't have to be perfect. This took me three or four minutes to sketch out. If it takes you any longer, you're probably working too hard. You're trying too hard to make it look perfect. But at the same time, if it takes you less than 30 seconds to sketch it, you're probably not trying hard enough, and I won't accept it. Just to give you an idea of how much work you should put in to your sketch before you put it in your document or submit it in Schoology. But from there, we can move on to the next question. Create a black box model of the sprinkler to identify the system inputs 
the intended product functions and the outputs of the black box model. Now, you may recall we've learned how to do this in the past. All you do is you fill in this box. You say what goes into this sprinkler system. So what kind of things go into this system to make it work? And so you have to think about what is the function? Well, the function is to spray water on the grass. And so what has to go into this system to make that happen? And the answer should be obvious, and it shouldn't just be one thing. There should be two or three things going in, and there should then be two or three things coming out. And so, for example, one thing that you might notice when you hear a sprinkler is that you hear a sprinkler. And so something that comes out of this system is sound. Think to yourself, what else comes out of a sprinkler? What goes into a sprinkler to make a sprinkler work and spray water? on the grass. And so I expect two to three answers for your inputs and two to three answers for your outputs. And I'm just asking you to be honest and realistic. If you're not sure, make sure you ask me and we can work on it together and figure it out. And from there, we can move on to question five, which says to make an educated guess regarding the following. What do you think causes the sprinkler head's inner tube to eject upwards? And to answer that question, Let's take a look at the sprinkler again, pushing the pin inside to make the head come up. Now, obviously, there are no pins in this system when it's working in the ground, when you're watering your lawn. There's no pin in the ground underneath the sprinkler pushing it up to cause the head to come out. Something does cause the head to come out to water the lawn. What is that thing? And so you'll do your best to answer this question honestly. You're just creating a hypothesis on how you think this system works. The next question asks, what do you think causes the sprinkler head's inner tube to retract back? So something causes it to come up. And if you look, when that something stops, it pushes back down. What is pushing it back down? What is causing this inner tube where the water comes out right here in this thin little crack here to go back into this rubber gasket here, this little white part made of rubber to seal it off. What is causing that to happen? And if the answer is obvious, then answer it honestly. If it's not obvious, make your best guess on what would cause that to happen. And then Tell me how you think the entire system works from start to finish. What causes the sprinkler to start sprinkling? What causes the sprinkler to stop sprinkling? And what are the steps in between? I expect you to give me two or three sentences for this answer. And the last thing you need to do before you're done with your functional analysis activity is finish filling out this table. So if you look, I have this picture of the sprinkler with multiple parts labeled as part numbers. Now, obviously, these aren't all of the parts. There are more parts inside, but they're all we can see while it's together. And so, when able to describe how this system works and understand how the system works, you need to understand the parts that are visible when it's together. And to demonstrate this understanding, all you need to do is fill in this table. And so, name the parts that you see. So, what is part one called? What is part two called? What is this sort of top piece. As you can see, I labeled part three for you because you can barely see it, but it is this rubber gasket. And we discussed this a little bit ago, but if you look, you can see there is a piece of rubber, this white piece, and it's kind of hard to see, like I said, from this angle while it's still put together. But what happens is when this is pushed back down, this seal, hits this rubber and the rubber is able to prevent leaks and prevent water from coming out. But again, if you look closely, that is the rubber gasket that that arrow for part three is pointing at. Now, technically, this yellow piece and this black piece on top are two different parts, separate from this part right here, part five. But as you'll see when we do our structural analysis, we're actually gonna keep these two pieces together for our structural analysis for the sake of simplicity. So go ahead and just call this one part and this part five a separate part. 
and do your best to fill out this table as best you can. Notice it says if you are not sure what the part is actually called, choose a name that makes sense. You will not lose credit for naming the components incorrectly as long as the name makes sense. So for example, part one, maybe I don't know what it's called, but I know what it does. It is a case, that's it. It is a case. It houses the components of our sprinkler. And so I can just call part one the housing, or I can call it the casing of the sprinkler. And so hopefully this video has helped you get started on this activity and you can go from here.